my name is Jacob. Welcome back to CGA. Me and my boy C's. Here we are showing up again like we do every week. Uh, and, you know, every week we start off the same way with check-in. So, my boy C's, go on and check in with me, man. Tell me how you feeling. Man, I'm doing good. Uh, I'm blessed. Uh, my family's doing great. Um, I haven't seen him in a while in person, but I uh, one thing that this COVID-19 has showed us is that, uh, you know, we have this technology uh, and what's called Zoom, so I'm able to see them like that. And um, I can't see them personally just, just yet. Hopefully things, uh, you know, they lift this ban in the next couple of weeks and I'm able to go visit them and stay over there in person with them for a minute. But other than that, I'm good. Uh, you know, I just, uh, just working from home and, and staying safe, bro. Staying safe. Yeah, me too, big bro. I've been, uh, I've been stuck up in this, uh, in this room, you know, doing my, my, uh, quarantine thing. Um, but you know, I'm a 10. Life is really, really good. I've been truly blessed. Um, and, uh, I'm not even going to front and act like, um, this is anything comparable to, to uh, lockdown, lockdowns that I experienced on the inside, but it is different. And I take into account that the people out here in the world are not used to this type of, uh, this type of environment. So it's really, really stressful on them, which makes everything else a little bit worse. But overall, I'm great. Um, looking, hopefully, uh, looking to get off this paper uh, and start my life as a, as a truly free, free man. But, but, Let's get into step nine real quick, um, you know, and let's, let's, let's see how it works, what's going on. So, see, okay. you want to wanna start that off or you want me to drop it in? No, I'll start it off. I want to I wanna share. You know what? Um, you said something right now, get off this paper. What you mean about that? Parole? So, yes, I'm talking about getting off parole. Uh, and, I, I, you know, you may have some information uh, that you want to share with the people. I don't know. Uh, but... You know, I'm, I'm looking to get off parole. You know, it's been six years since I've been on parole. Um, they're telling me uh, possibly one more year, but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Okay. Yeah, for me, um, I, like, I, like I shared before, I got some great news on uh, April 21st, 2020. Uh, my PO contacted me and told me that I was no longer on parole. Now, this was something that I had done personally. I wrote a letter to the Board of Parole Hearings and I shared with them um, how me being on parole was hindering me from growing in my profession and my field of work. Um, I explained to them what I've been doing since I've been home. I've also told them I took full responsibility for my crime. Uh, I have been, uh, as we say, disciplinary free with the PO, which means no dirty test, um, always on time. Uh, he, he's never had to look for me or anytime he needed to see me or he needed some kind of uh, something from me, I was there. Um, but he would ask me to go speak at these PAC meetings that these lifers will be attending. Um, I would be there. So I, I was doing everything I was supposed to be doing and uh, it worked out for me. Um, I had to do seven years. Uh, so I only got to do four and a half years and I, I got the two and a half years that I had left, um, I got to suspend it. So it's it's good to be free, man. It's good to to really, 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 really give back the number that they once gave me back in 1991. Uh, I'm no longer an H number, no longer 48, 239, no longer. Because even though we, I was out here for the four and a half years, every time that I went to the parole office, I had to sign in. And before I could use my name, I had to put my CDC number and that really, that really didn't sit well with me because I felt like I was still a number. I felt like I still belonged to the state, which I did because I still had that number. But now I no longer belong to the state. Now I'm a free man. And um, I think the next step for me is to file for a, what is it called? A certificate of rehabilitation. File for that and then take it from there and hopefully get an opportunity to vote now. Yeah, I, 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 you know, I'm trying to get my E number back. I've had this E number for over 30 years, um, and I've only been to prison once. <laughs> uh, but um, 
just time. It, it takes time. You know, I'm patient. It's been six years. I, you know, what's another year? Another year. Uh, it really is not even a year. It's more like nine months. But um, it'll get here, and, and I'll be free. And I, and I'm gonna have a party. I'm, I'm gonna invite all my friends, and uh, you, you, I'm gonna invite you too, C's. But if you come over there with that bullshit, it's gonna be. A, <laughs> but anyway, let's get to step nine, man. Uh, um, and. This is a very, 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 very important step. This is uh, probably uh, one of the most heaviest steps that we do in the 12 steps. So, see, it's going to kick it off for me, and, and then we'll go from there. Okay. Well, first of all, like we always do, we, we do a little bit of a – we review a little bit about the last step that we did, um, which was step eight, right, making a list of all the people that we've harmed and uh, became willing to make amends to them all. I think that's a huge step for us. I think that's that's the step where we write all those names down, and uh, however we choose to make those amends, this is a this is the time now. So step nine, he says we made direct amends and restitution whenever possible to the persons we injured, except when doing so will cause further injury or harm. Now before we get into the step, what does that mean to you? Except when doing so will cause further injury or harm. Well, for, for, for me, that, that, you know, that means that um, I'm going to make a direct amends unless it's going to cause the other, the family member or the survivor to go through uh, another traumatic experience. If it's going to cause them to go through a traumatic experience or uh, regurgitate a lot of the pain from the past, then uh, I'll find another way to make an amends. Okay, yeah, and that's exactly what it means to me. Uh, a lot of times families, love they're not ready for that. Right? They're not. They're just. It's, that's just the way it is. Uh, we can't hold it against anybody, but that's just the way it is. So we know that us attempting to make things right, because now we are right in our life, it, they might not be ready. I mean, they might not ever be ready. And, and when I first read that, before I was ready, and I first read it, I I, I, I immediately thought about me. You know, my character defects start surfacing. I like, and whether it caused part of the harm, I start thinking, well, damn. It may cause me some harm when I go to the board. You know, when I go to the board, this may come back and cause me not to get found suitable or get a date. Uh, and it took me some time in the course of, of a sponsor to, to, to point out to me that this is not talking about you. This is talking about the people that you harmed or the family members that uh, caught, that experienced trauma because of your behavior. Yeah, exactly. You know, and... and um... And I think as we read in some of this step, it's going to even talk about um, how how it, it could open up old wounds, right? A lot of people, and I'm not saying people have forgot about their families or their loved ones or whatever the case may be, but um, and when you open up old wounds, uh, a lot of people that are not fully healed, man, they'll they'll they'll. You know, it, it could be bad for them. It could be all bad. It could, they could fall into a depression. They could become angry. They could become, um, you know, violent. They could they could do stuff. They could say stuff. So it's just a, a matter of knowing and know, and understanding when and when it's a good time for you to make those amends, right? So it says here on the first paragraph of step nine, it says the eighth step has prepared us for the ninth step. It is important to approach this step, not attempting to predict the outcome, but rather to renew our intentions. We wish to open the door wide for genuine understanding, a healing process, and ultimately forgiveness and closure. This step is proof of our willingness to grow along spiritual lines, to acknowledge our faults, mistakes, and gross wrongs that brought harm, injury, or destruction to others without cause or justification. We are not learning about living in remorse for our victims, as wide as this realm of victims is. And in step one, we realized the first proof of our destructive lifestyle addiction was through countless relationships we damaged or destroyed. Now in the ninth step, we are doing our part to, be, to begin mending broken or shattered relationships the best we can by responsibly and fully accountable for our behavior and actions. So, I mean, it's right there. Plain and simple. And for our viewers that have to go to the board of parole hearings, right, whether they're a lifer or whether they're a YOP, understand that these letters that you have men or women have wrote or have written uh, will not be shared 
with your victim's family or anyone else, right? This is just for the commissioners. A lot of people, that's their fear. Um, even even when I when when I used to go back and do the work personally in the prisons, uh, guys used to come up to me and tell me, "Hey man, you know I don't want my dad reading about my inside statement because is, is he gonna know that, you know, because the way he treated me or what he did to me is what led me to become the way I became." Like, is, I go, "No, this is for you and for the commissioners because they're the only ones that are gonna see this stuff, right?" So it's the same the same uh, concept with making amends. Right, it's just another way of you showing remorse. Yeah, and you know, and, and, and it's also about accountability. You know, and 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 when I hear people say, because I have a lot of people that tell me stuff like that too. I don't want my parents, or I don't want my father, or my mother, or my sister, brother, or my daughter, whatever, uh, to hear this or to read this letter. And to me, that's a that's a sign that you're still not where you need to be. Uh, you're still you're still growing. And the reason I say that is because part of this step is about being accountable for what you've done. And here it is, I'm writing this remorse letter and I'm writing this remorse letter because I'm remorseful for what I've done. I want to give them an opportunity to heal. I want to give them some closure, but I also want to be accountable for what I've done. And, and that's part of what gives them closure is when I'm able to say, you know what, this is what happened. This is why I did it. I'm not really asking for forgiveness. I'm being accountable and putting it on the table and telling them I'm sorry. Or I apologize for what I've done. And so here it is. You have a parent or a brother or a sister or whoever, and you don't want them. You're still trying to protect yourself. You're still making it about you. It's not about you. It's not about you. So here's an opportunity to, to, to do some work and realize, you know what? Any backlash I get from this is not from the letter, it's from my behavior. Mm -hmm. And so if I want to correct, if I don't want to get the backlash and I want a different uh, way that people relate to me, I have to correct the behavior. It has nothing to do with the letter. Yeah. You know, for me, Jacob, I, 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 and I've shared this before numerous amounts of time, that there's not enough money in this world for me to repay for what I did to my mother, right? Um, and what she did for me. So the only way that I can honestly, honestly repay her is by being who I am today, right? A responsible, considerate, loving, humble, uh, uh, caring human being that really puts others before himself, right? Uh, I give back, I'm, I'm of service, and um, I do what I can, right, to make things right. Because this is, this is, this is the only way that I could show her, like, this is who I am today, mom. You don't ever have to worry about me doing anything dumb that's gonna lead me back to prison. Um, you, you don't ever have to worry about me, uh, be, you know, not being responsible enough to pay my bills and or me doing stuff that's going to take me back to prison. Like, that's not me anymore, right? And that's the only way that I can pay her back, right? And, and other, and other uh, cases where we've taken the lives of people, again, there's no – families will love to see your transformation, right? And that's the only way that you can repay them back, you know? Uh, obviously we can bring lives back, right? And uh, all we can do is learn from our mistakes. And this is a great way for you to show like, especially when it comes to remorse, because this is one of the three components that the board is looking for, right? You have to show remorse. You have to accept full responsibility, not responsibility, full responsibility, which means since the very first day you committed your first crime or since when you started doing stuff that you weren't supposed to start doing, take full responsibility since that point on, right? Because this is what eventually got you into a prison cell or maybe even with a life sentence or with 40 years. So to me, step nine is, is um, you can't, there's not enough money in the world to pay it back. All you can do is just be that person that you were intended to be, correct? Yeah, I, 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 I think I, I'm along those lines. I mean, there's different ways to pay restitution. Um, there's different ways to give back. And I think, I, th I think the most important thing here is that um, we, we become willing to be accountable for what we've done. We stop hiding behind the exterior and start showing our vulnerability. We're not, we can't change the past. The past can never be changed. 
However, we have a duty to make the future better, not just for us, but for other people. And this remorse uh, letter or the step nine is a process of that. It's a process of allowing people to enhance their lives by being uh, detached from uh, experiences of the past. So in other words, I committed a horrible act. They've experienced, uh, they've had negative experiences in life because of the act that I committed. So here it is. 20, 25, 30 years later, however long it may be, I'm writing this letter, I'm taking, I'm being accountable, I'm letting them know what happened, I'm letting them know what, why it happened, I'm, I'm expressing my, my uh, sincere apology so I can move on and so they can move on. But I, I, I really wanted to touch on something that I think that you did an eloquent job of, of, of bringing to the forefront, not necessarily touching on specifically, and one of the ways that I started my whole process of writing letters is, to, is with my family. Uh, realizing that your family is also a victim in this. Uh, my moms, my sister, my, all those people, they're victims. And so it was hard at first for me to find the words, because I wasn't in touch with my feelings, to talk to the survivors of the crime in the family. Uh, but I was able to do that with my mother. I understood the pain that I caused her because she wrote me all the time and told me like, oh, son, uh, you know, I'm so hurt. I wish this was like that. So I started off writing a letter to, to my family, my, my mother, my sister, and start tapping into those emotions. And then I was able to transform into writing letters to the survivor and to the, their family because I, I start I was in touch with myself. So I think when he's talked about writing this letter to his mother, I think that's that's something that we don't, talk about enough but it's something that's really really essential in making the progress to the next step and and one thing like it says here in that first paragraph it says that it's important to approach this step not attempting to predict the outcome and i say that to say this i remember when i first wrote um remorse letters to my personal family like my sister my mother my father um the only person that i heard back was was from my mom and I remember her telling me, she says, you know what? Um, there's nothing for you to apologize about. Um, you know, uh, uh, you know I, I forgive you and I love you and you're my son and I'm always be there for you. And, you know, I told myself when I left juvenile hall, the first time I went to see you and you were there, you know, I was in the car and I was crying. I was crying, I was crying, I was crying, but I let it all out. And then after that, I says, you know what? I can't do this anymore. I can't be like this. I have to be strong. And um, I says, but but there's nothing for you to for you to apologize about. So my sister and my father never replied, and that sort of made me feel some type of way. But remember, I was still early in my recovery, so I didn't understand that, you know. And even when even when I called my sister like about six months later, and I told her, hey man, what? Like, didn't you get a letter from me apologizing? She's like, oh, no, I didn't, I didn't get no letter. Like, she was even dodging it. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, I send you a very, very personal letter. And she goes, oh, that one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I got it. Like, she didn't even want to talk about it, you know? Um, I don't know if it was a case because it opened up old wounds. I don't know if it was a case of uh, she probably hadn't forgiven me yet for robbing me, robbing her of a brother to have out there, you know, um, that she could lean on. Um, or, or maybe she was still mad at me because of the decisions that I made that led me to be in the position that I was in. So I don't know. But at the end of the day, all I can say is that today my sister is one of my biggest supporters. Um, she loves me to death. Uh, I, I think she was just trying to sweep it under the rug like, like normally Hispanic families do, Mexican families, they sweep stuff under the rug because they don't like to really talk about it, and that's just being real. Black families do it too. Yeah, so uh, I sort of figured that. I didn't want to throw you guys out there. I just, I, I can only throw mine out there. I can't throw you guys out there. But I know, I know, I know for a fact that, that my family's like, you know, even, even out here, I was trying to tell my mom one time we were trying to have a conversation, and I was trying to apologize to her in person, and she was like, nah, 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 nah. like, you're home, you're home, forget it, like, it's good, you're good, you're okay, you're in a good place, and I was like, mom, but we still have to talk about this, 
because I want you to understand this is why I did what I did. No, 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 no. And then this, it just ended. Well, but you know, I, I think, I think, see, I think, I think the message that I'm getting from what you're, this, what you're telling right now is that uh, it's not my responsibility to clean up anybody else's side of the street. So uh, here it is. I, I'm, pre I'm presenting the opportunity. I come to mom, to my sister, my whoever, and I'm trying to apologize to, to them. And they're like, man, ah, that's okay. Everything is good. At a, uh, it's imperative for me to clean my side of the street so I can keep moving on. I, I can't clean that side of the street, you know? Uh, and so uh, how they clean up their, 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 the mess on their side is how they clean it up. Uh, and I, I know it sounds harsh, uh, but in truth, in reality, it's the only way that uh, it's the only way that it can it, our relationship can prosper. Uh, yeah, is for me to to clean up my side and let them clean up there. So, uh, what you talked about as far as your sister and your mother, I think that's common amongst most families: uh, black, white, Hispanic. Uh, I think that happens a lot when guys get out after doing these decades, and they're different people. And they come and they be like, I want to, I want to apologize for how I showed up in life and how I affected you. Uh, and people are like, we don't care about that. That's in the, that's in the past. We care that you're here now. And sometimes that's difficult to understand. But the, this step is about clearing your side of the street, so to allow you to move on to become the person uh, that can be productive here in society. Yeah, and I, and I was just sharing it just in case our viewers get that same, you know, feelings that they're not hearing back from the people that they made amends to. And they're like, oh, man, well, they don't care. Or they, no, it's just everyone's different, you know. Just I think you clarified it when you said we could only clear up our side of the street. We can't force nobody to accept our, our apology, right? I also think, Caesar, that that's a clear note that there's still work for you to do. So mm -hmm. I sent this letter out. I don't get no response, and I start making up things in my mind. Mm -hmm. I start saying stuff like, oh, man, they don't care about me, or they don't love me, or they trip me. I don't know what the situation is. and The fact that I'm still making up these negative thought processes shows me that I still it's still some internal work that I need to do because if I'm going to make up a scenario, I need to be making up a positive scenario, not yeah. a negative one. Uh, and, and so... That just, for me, that tells, because I, I went through that process where I sent stuff out because I wrote my letters and I sent them out. And I didn't get responses. I started getting nervous. I started getting scared. But it was work that I had to do. It was like, I still got defects. I'm still working on myself. And that's okay. Uh, I just I just needed to get to a point where I can get out here and be, pro be productive. And that's what it's about. Um, understanding what your weaknesses are and finding solutions to making strengths. Yeah, you know, and, and, and that's why I had mentioned that it was early in my recovery when this was going on. Like if I would have done it now, I would have been more understanding and more open-minded, and, and, and I wouldn't let it affect me the way it did. But it was early in my recovery. I was fresh into it. I wanted to patch things up. I wanted to make things right. And I was expecting some of that feedback, right? And I didn't, so it made me feel some type of way. And that's why it's important that it's in this step right here, it talks about that. I was predicting an outcome, and when I didn't get that outcome, it made me feel some type of way. And, and I just wanted our viewers to know, like, this, is, this, this was me in early in my recovery, and maybe if you're early in your recovery and that happens to you, don't take it personal. Just know that you could only do so much, right? Um, the second part of this of this uh, step, it says we made direct amends and restitution whenever possible to the person we injured. It says there is not a victim who does not deserve an amends. There has not been any damage we caused not deserving of restitution. So our amends and restitution will always be demonstrated through our character and our action towards all others with full respect to our victims. In those instances, we, when we know it's very appropriate to make amends and restitution, we can achieve doing so. We will respond promptly under the direction of CGA sponsor. Once we achieve making direct amends, we simply do not forget what we have done, nor forget our past victims. We continue to change our characters and respect how lethal the, the addiction cycle is. Recovery is now a lifelong process, and our amends and restitution is an ongoing critical part 
of our lifetime recovery. So it, it says something about restitution here. What does that mean to you, uh, Jacob? What's your definition of the restitution in this step nine? Uh, for me, restitution is any way, any way of paying back. I know a lot of times uh, we hear restitution, we immediately think uh, financial, you know, like, oh, yeah, we're all restitution. How much you owe? 10000 uh, But for me, when we talk about this particular step, uh, restitution comes in many forms. There's many ways to give back. There's many ways to pay back. Uh, but when I hear restitution, I, I hear a person kind of giving back to, to rectify a problem that they cause. Exactly. And that's exactly what restitution is. I always tell the guys inside, it's not about 55% of your money order that you received in the, of your JPay. That, that's not it. Uh, restitution is just another way for you to pay back. Uh, and and it, it's with your character, right? With your character traits, being, uh, being honest, being responsible, being kind, being loving, being accepting towards anybody, no matter what, right? I believe that's the best way to, for us to pay restitution. Um, another thing it talks about in here is a, a CGA sponsor, right? And, and I understand that um, for a lot of our viewers, they might not have a CGA sponsor in prison, or they might have, right? I know one of our coworkers had a sponsor while he was in prison, um, but not a lot of people do. So usually the sponsor is the one that's going to read your letters first before you submit them or you make amends to whether if it's you send them out to your family or to whoever you hurt or damaged, right? It's the sponsor that's going to look them over and say, okay, this is, these are good. These are good letters right here. You know, um, a bad letter would be, well, I want to done it if you want to done this to me first, right? That would be a bad letter. That that wouldn't, that... That's you blaming the victim. Uh, yeah. Now, instead of you taking responsibility, you're shifting the blame. You're saying, because you did this to me, I react in this way, and I did this to you. And that is not the way you want to make amends to anybody. And when you do write a amends letter, you don't want to make an excuse for anything that you did. Even if there's a, 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 a an excuse ready for you, right at your whim, you don't want to use that. You want to be, you want to come open face and just, you know, this is what happened. This is my involvement. This is uh, the decisions I made. This is why I made the decisions. And uh, I apologize for the damage I caused in you guys and every, and your family's life. Um, you don't, you want to stay away from if this wouldn't happen. Oh, I grew up in a poor neighborhood. We're not looking for sympathy. We're here to be accountable. We're here to let the person know that, uh, we understand that the gains that we've made over the last 15, 20 years have come at the expense of their loved one. And that uh, we understand that and we're going to live our life to give back because that was a high price for them to pay for me to be a productive member of society. So I'm still trying to pay that loan off. Yeah. And I, and I like, I, I truly, truly like where it mentions here about the addiction cycle. It says we continue to change our character and respect respect how lethal the addiction cycle is and i love that it's, it's it's mentioned in this step because we can never forget about the addiction cycle that's an important component of what activates right our, our defects right so if for example if i if if you make amends with someone and someone doesn't want to accept it right the first thought is going to be what? Oh, F this person, man. Screw this person. So now, because you're in your defects, you activate the cycle of addiction. The thought is F this dude. He don't give a crap. He don't care um, how much I've changed. He doesn't care about my apology to him. And you, you, you activate that cycle of addiction to where it's the OCP gets activated, you know? And maybe you even want to go back and re-hurt this person or whatever the case may be. And a lot of times when, when that stuff happens, people stop programming. They be like, oh, F this dude. He don't care. Forget it. Well, why am I taking these classes? I don't need to take these classes. I don't need to, I don't need to do none of this stuff. F that dude. Yeah. You know, and, and that's how this cycle, this is why it's, it's, it, it's important for our viewers to truly, truly know and understand how this cycle works. And, I, and I'm hoping that we did a great job when we were able to, to break it down for our audience, right? And hopefully we have a, 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 
a follow-up a recording of CGA, we could talk more about that because that's something that, I, that, that that's for me, that's right here in my frontal cortex, right? Making sure that whenever something comes up for me that it doesn't activate the cycle of addiction because you got a, I don't want to end up in prison. You got a frontal cortex. I thought it was just one whole thing. You, you know. <laughs> nah, it's, it's right here. It's right here. <laughs> uh, but you know something? Um, the, what what makes, for me, what makes the, the cycle of addiction so lethal is its cunningness. And what I mean by that is uh, it generalizes a lot of things and it makes it unimportant. It makes it seem like there's no big deal, and it is. And it, 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 it drops me into a cycle of sabotage. And I'll give you an example. It's like, uh, I was in prison. I had got out of the shoe. I was on A2B, had been on A2B for like two, three years. And I'm waiting for my name to come up and it's not coming up. And a guy comes through and say, hey, man, give me $50, man. I'm going to give you a job, get you a job. I work in the inmate assignments. I'm going to have you assigned. All you got to do is give me $50 in canteen. And in that instance, I'm thinking, oh, it's not hurting anybody. I'm going to give him the $50 to get a job. I can do it. And I minimize the fact that I'm making it okay to break the rules. And, and 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 I know you looking, you probably saying, Oh man, come on, man. You just going too far. But that's how the addition cycle works. I'll get in there and then in my mind, I'm I'm sending myself this message that you know what, it's okay to to kind of uh, uh bend a certain rule here or, or or go around a certain rule there here or there, and then I start doing it more. Hey, sees, you know what? I'm looking for some sugar. You got the hookup? Oh yeah. Hey man, I need some onions. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, now I'm back on the yard selling dope. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the addiction cycle is really, really cunning because uh, before you realize you're back in it, you're already in the uh, the progression stage, and life has already become you know these criminal lifestyles has already become normal again. Uh, and then you realize, man, I'm I'm tripping. So, and I and I, I wanted to bring that up because he's right about this addiction cycle. It really, really has to be in the front part of your cortex where you can see how sometimes uh, we, 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 we downplay something that's really, really serious and make it not as serious. And in the long run, it comes back and, and helps us fall back into our, uh, our addictions. And how it's explained to us in the cycle of addiction pamphlet, it has no conscience and it doesn't care about you, right? So to me, if something doesn't care about me, then man, I'm, I gotta make sure that this doesn't get activated within me because this addiction cycle, if I'm in, in the squad car, I'm back in the county jail, it's laughing at me. It's laughing at me and telling me, hey man, that's your fault. You did this to yourself. And if, you're, if, and if you're in an addiction cycle while you're sitting in the back, the, the squad car, you're like, man, I don't give up. I don't give an F. So yep. out here, you know what I'm saying? Because just like the addiction cycle doesn't care about you, when you're in the addiction cycle, you don't care about yourself. Exactly. Exactly. And then the more you don't care about yourself, the more you become irresponsible, the more you become angry, the more that when people try to talk to you or you, you're, 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 uh, you know, you have a bad attitude, uh, it's just, it's just activated. That cycle is just, and it's just getting, and it's just keep pro progressing and getting worse and worse and worse and worse, right? So it, it's ugly, man. It's ugly, and 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 like I said, it has no conscience. Uh, it doesn't care about you. If you end up back in prison with another life, it doesn't care. It doesn't, you know. So be mindful about it, man. Be mindful and 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 um, don't think everything is that easy. And and, and I think that's another point. Cause see, you've been like really on is um, you are also a victim. Uh, you victimize not only the person who you committed the crime against, you also victimize your family and you victimize yourself. Uh, you are a victim. So uh, some people, I didn't do it personally, but I know some people that wrote themselves letters because they destroyed their lives. They, 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 they took away their family. They took away uh, their children. They took away everything. They took away the possibility of being ultra successful back on. Yes, sir. So, uh, the well, third part of this is accept when doing so will hurt, will cause further injury or harm in any instances when we have determined under the guidance of a CGA sponsor 
that an amends and restitution is appropriate, there is no excuse not to achieve it through CGA's process. Certainly, as stated above, we make di direct amends, we, which means we do it ourselves, not have anyone else do it for us, through letters, by phone, email, or in person. We also can make amends through prayer, asking God to open a channel to our victims whenever they may be, and in those situations, it's best we not make direct contact to avoid causing further injury or harm. And we read our amends letters to our victims through prayer. We trust in faith that God will open up a spiritual channel to our victims on our sincere behalf. Following this amends, we offer a day of fasting, hungering, and thirsting for our victims' forgiveness for our wrongs, asking God to forgive us for having offended him, we stay mindful of our wrongs and our victims throughout the course of the day and sunrise to sunset. We practice unselfishness towards others in thoughts, words, and actions with respect to our victims. At sunset, we end this fasting in another humble prayer seeking God's compassion. In those instances of resentments that we have held against others, we are now willing to forgive those people with the same sincere understanding and desire for forgiveness that we would like for our victims. If we want to be forgiven, we must likewise be forgiven for those who hurt or injured us. Man, this is huge, Jacob. I remember, hey, hey, matter, of fact, matter of fact, you and I, you and I used to do this together, remember? You and I used to go into the chapel, I think it was every Thursday or Tuesday or Thursday, uh, and we used to meditate for an hour with... Um, I know you did it with Quakers, but what was yeah. the other? The we um, it was like a, it was the a meditation group. It was a uh, it was a uh, 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 Vipassana meditation group. Yeah, and I remember that was when I was introduced to that. Uh, it gave me a, a a gateway to to make my amends. Right, uh, those the people the 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 people that I couldn't reach out to to through mail or through whatever other or source of um, communication that I had, uh, I would do through prayer, right? And through prayer, I would do it through my meditation. And I love doing it. Not only did I do that, Jacob, but I also fast. So, uh, um, and I share this with a lot of my guys and a lot of our viewers might remember this conversation that we had. I would, I would have a, a, a nice, decent breakfast every Thursday morning because this is when I used to work in the kitchen, right? I would have a decent breakfast Thursday in the morning, and then I would not eat all the way into the next day at 7 in the morning, right? And that was my way of me sacrificing my body, and it was a way of me making amends, right? And I love how it, it shows that that's a, a good way because a lot of our viewers and a lot of our participants have done this before. They, have, they, they understand how to do a fasting. They understand how to do meditation. So if you can make those direct amends, like I said, through those channels, then this is another good way to do it. Or like I said here, through a spiritual foundation, which is through prayer. And, 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 and you know, I, I like really like the step about this. I like the part about this step when they start talking about uh, the forgiveness of other people as opposed to the forgiveness for yourself. And what I mean by that is that for me, for a long time, I was a gang member, so I, I always felt like, early on, I felt like, you know what? It is what it is. We both was involved in this lifestyle. Uh, I don't really feel bad for what I did, for what I did, because it was me or him, and you know, we both we both knew we signed up for. And I told you in early recordings, I didn't sign up to be killed. He didn't sign up to be killed. We signed up to gang bang. We didn't sign up to die. Uh, so he didn't sign up for that, and. I had to really sit back and say, you know, uh, I want people to forgive me. I want the board to forgive me. I want society to forgive me. I want them to give me a second chance and put me back out here so I can show them that I'm different. I'm not the same person. I can be a contributing member to society. But in order for me to do that, I got to also, I also have to do that for other people. I can't expect people to do it for me and not allow other people the same thing. And when, and so and so I, I'm, I feel like I'm a little cloudy. So let me clarify what I mean by a quick example. So me, myself, 
I went to the board. I was getting these denials. They said I lacked remorse. They said I lacked responsibility. And I couldn't understand it because I took a deal. I took a 25 to life deal. Uh, and so I always went in there and said, you know what? I, I'm responsible. It was me. I was, you know, and, but I, they kept saying I wasn't being responsible. And, and I'm looking for that forgiveness. However, I didn't, I hadn't forgiven, I haven't forgiven the people that had harmed me. And so, uh, and me not forgiving them and being able to move on, I'm steady blaming them for how I turned out. I'm blaming them. Oh, it's my father. It was this. It was my arms. It was because of that. It was this, this, this. But I'm, I'm taking responsibility for the behavior, but I'm not taking responsibility for, for me as a person. Uh, so I had to forgive them so I can move past the blame that I was attaching to them and take responsibility for who I, who I am or who I chose to show up as, which allowed me to be forgiven for what I've done because people start to see the change. They start to say, okay, this dude is not blaming everybody. This dude is taking, he's changing his life. He's not looking for his pops or his moms to change. He's changing himself. So now I can forgive him. Uh, and I don't know if that made things more clear, uh, but you know, it was a process for me that was really, really big and something I had to go through to get on this track that I'm on now. Now, you know, I forgive myself in a blink of a moment because I know that I'm doing the best I can with the decisions that, I mean, with, with the information that I have. Yeah, and, and then I, it made sense to me, Jacob, what you were saying. Um, one of the things that, I was, that was difficult for me to forgive was myself, right? Uh, that was very extremely difficult. There's times where uh, when uh, I'm asked to go somewhere and share my story, and I'm okay with sharing my story, but when I'm talking about it, I still get emotional because, because – I start having those thoughts of, of man, do I really deserve to be out here? Do I really deserve a second chance? Like, look what I've done. Look, at, look how many people I've harmed. And how I get past that is that I do that self-talk and I tell myself, it's okay. You know what? You're no longer who you were anymore. That's not you. You're not supporting that lifestyle. You're not doing the stuff you were doing before. If anything, you're giving back. You're being of service. You're helping others. So so it's not like you deserve this, but you should be okay with what you have. And that's what really calms me down because, like I said, man, when I talk about putting my family's life in danger, man, that thing just, it just does something to my stomach. That it just makes me feel so, so horrible about how can I have done this, especially to my biggest supporters, which is my immediate family, right? Um but another part I think you were talking about was was the 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 finding forgiveness in others, right? And and for me, I played the blame game for a long time. I thought it was, you know the DA it was it was the DA's fault, it was the cops' fault, it was everybody's fault but mine. And um, one thing that I learned through CGA and through various other groups that I've taken, um, you know, in order for me to move forward, I have to really get away from any kind of poison. Any kind of poison that will hold me back from being the person that I want to be, right? I don't want to be this loving and humble and, and, and caring person, but then I'm holding on to this baggage. I'm holding on to this baggage. Or when you mention somebody, I'll sit there and make a face like, oh, F that dude. I don't like that. Like, I don't, I don't want to do that because that takes me right back to the, to the person that I was before, right? So now because I'm able to say, you know what, man, I have no... No hard feelings towards anybody. Towards anybody. I've said it before. If if the dude that, that pointed me out in court were to walk into my were get in front of me, man, I, I I would give him a hug. You know, because I know that he did what he did at that time for himself. Right? To make him uh feel better or whatever. You know, uh, at the end of the day, I learned to to forgive him because it was about him. It wasn't really about me. You know, he was put in a situation where if you don't say what we want, you, what we want you to say, then you're going to go down with him. So he did what was right for him. And in the beginning, I was super angry at that because I was like, man, this dude cheated me out of my life. But at the end of the day, I had no control over that. These were the cards that were dealt. And I seen the type of person that I was. So, of course, I belonged in prison. Of course, I belonged where I was at. Right. And it was and, and prison was able to correct my thinking 
something that we, you and I have talked about this before, where now I'm back to being me and I'm back to being productive and I'm back to being responsible and I'm back to being kind and humble and, and giving and loving. And, and I have, I have no hard feeling towards anybody, man. Cause like I said here, if you want people to forgive you, man, then you have to forgive those that you have holding on to. Right. Yes, sir. You so, do. you know, and, well, and, and see, so, so how do, how do you tap into these emotions to write this letter? Because this letter, for me, it was really difficult to even get it started. You know, that was the hardest part for me was to start it because I didn't know exactly, I didn't know what to say. So, I mean, how, how do you start this? How do you, how do you tap into the emotions? I, I, I would just honestly um, use the word empathy. To use the word empathy, I would use it in a form of saying, okay, put yourselves... Put yourself in the victim's shoes and let's say someone, what you did to someone that someone did that to you, what would you want to hear from that person, right? What would you want to hear first and foremost? That's one. Um, a second one is, you know, uh, uh, speak from the heart. You know, whatever comes to your heart. I know, the, the, I know all the information is not going to come to you in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the perfect format. Right, but when you write that stuff down, you could put it in order later. But really, share with you. I'm going to share something with you. Um, one of my good friends, I was speaking to him a couple of days ago, and um, you know his his relationship ended with his girl. It, it, they were together for a while, and um, and he started sharing with me how how he missed having her daughter, you know, in his living room, uh, playing with her with her toys, and and seeing his girl making dinner, and 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 and. He just missed so much stuff about his daily, how his day went, right? And I told him, well, have you shared this with her? He's like, no. And I said, why not? He goes, well, it's because if I do, what if she, what if she, what if I share, like, what if I pour my heart out to her and she doesn't care still? And she's still like, we're still not together. So I just pour out all my emotions and my feelings and she don't care, right? Well, it's not about her, bro. It's about you. It's about you letting her know how you feel. You know what? It didn't work out, but because it didn't work out, um, I know there's something there, and I'm telling you what I'm feeling right now. And it's the same way in the remorse letter, right? It's a way where you share your feelings. Man, I, I screwed up. There's no excuse for my behavior. You know, all I can tell you is that I was in a bad place, and I made some horrible choices, and I am truly sorry, and I, you know, even, you can even go as far as saying how much you worked on yourself to become the man that you were supposed to become when you were brought into this world or woman. Um, that's the way that I would approach because that's the way I did it for mine. You know? So. And, and I only ask that, season because I think it's important. I know a lot of times people get discouraged with the process. I know uh, that happened for me. I, I got down. I was. I went to these groups. They started talking about this remorse letter, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna give it a shot. I went back to the cell, and I sat there for like hours trying to figure out how to get it started. And then I started getting discouraged. And like, you know what? Nah, I'm cool on that stuff, man. I ain't, you know that. I'm cool. Um, and like I told you, for me, I had to. I got to think of like my family. Like, you know what? My mom's. I, I do deserve to write her a letter. I do deserve to write my sister and my nieces, nephew, kids, and the people that's in immediate, my immediate family. I, I owe them a letter. And for me writing them a letter and myself a letter, I was able to tap into my feelings. And then by the end of writing moms a letter, I was able to write the family of the victim a letter. I was able to write the survivors of the crime a letter. I was also able to write the city a letter. Because I think when we're talking about remorse letters, remorse letters is something that you can never write too many of. <laughs> uh, but then, you know, you know, if you go into the board, you don't want to walk in there with 200 uh, support letters. I mean, uh, 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 remorse, remorse letters. letters. But at the same time, there's so many people to write. You know, you write all the people that was directly involved. You got your family. You got the other person's family. You got police officers. You got medical uh, medical uh, people. You have uh, uh, the, the innocent bystanders. I wrote remorse letters to everybody that filed in a police report that they heard gunshots. 
uh, because that's a traumatic experience and, and I caused it. So I, I wrote all the remorse letters. And so I, I don't want people to get down and just focus on writing the one remorse letter because this step is about the ripple effect. It's, it's everybody, you know, you, you, it's, it's so many people to make amends to. Uh, and sometimes uh, understanding that the people that are closest to you is going to help you get the emotion. Sometimes it's better to write your family first and so you can get tap into that emotion and then go and uh, do support uh, remorse letters for the victims. I'm sorry. Thank you, Jacob. Thank you. So because we're short of time, that's, that's we're going to end uh, step nine right here. Uh, but I want to I want to leave you guys uh, from uh, uh, our viewers on this step nine. One last thing, you know, uh, and I always use this and you might have heard this before, Jacob. Um, it's like you grab a pebble and you throw it in the middle of a lake. Right. And that little pebble is the crime that you committed. But the waves that the ripple effect that the, the little pebble made to that water is all the people that we've damaged along the way just for that, you know, choice that we made in our lives where we did damage or we we, we did whatever we did that took took us a prison right and the, the ripple effects is is what um it's all the people that we're talking about right now it's step nine you know so it's a lot of them as you can see if you sit there and you throw a pebble in the pond you're gonna see a lot of little waves and that's what it is so with that being said any last uh any last remarks before we end this video uh you guys just uh be safe, check on your family because uh, this COVID-19 stuff is serious. So make sure you check on your family and, you know, uh, write the remorse letters, man. It, it is going to do you a, a, a great service and help you get out of prison. You got all the time in the world right now. Peace.